Okay, in this video we're going to look at Charles' Law and Charles's Law and that talks about how the volume and the temperature are related at a constant pressure. So, if you were to increase the volume of a gas, so if the temperature were to increase this volume of a the gas, then the volume would increase too. And we hope that that's directly proportional to one another. And that's the experiment that we're testing. So how do we go about testing that? Um, I've got a picture here of the experimental setup. And let's just take a look. And let me shrink that a little bit there. So what we're dealing with here is we're going to place a small capillary tube in submerged in water. And the, in the capillary tube here, um, we're going to have a meter ruler that's stuck behind it. It's going to be secured by some elastic bands, and there's going to be a thermometer in there as well. Two liter beaker, maybe a lot, but that's fine. Hot water, heat proof, etc. etc. Now, what we're hoping to see in this capillary tube, and if I just try and draw it a little better there. What we have inside is probably the small capillary that goes down, and then we're going to fill it with a little bit of sulfuric acid. Um, good. That will result in there being a volume of air below it and as the temperature increases as the temperature of this air increases so that volume will increase and this is sulfuric acid and why sulfuric acid well I think it's because it sort of dehydrates the air and it removes the moisture from the air but there is a big worry uh, no not a big worry do be warned here sulfuric acid is concentrated sulfuric acid maybe I'll write in there conch so therefore, be warned, you don't want any of that uh, getting onto your skin. Okay, there's also a few more other little provisors. I've tried and tested this lots of times, and a few things to note. This must be small. We don't want too much of a pressure acting. The capillary tube must be small. Or should I say small diameter. And therefore, for the same temperature change, you're going to get a bigger movement of the volume. And also, the um, if that is the small bit of sulfuric acid and here is the volume of the gas, all of that must be submerged. So three things I did wrong when I started doing this. Not to say that I got any good results, but well, there we go. So with that in mind, what are we going, how are we going to measure these respective, um, these respective things? Let me uh, move that a little smaller for us. And let's say that the volume, of course, is going to be the area of the capillary tube multiplied by the height. And we hope that is proportional to temperature. So all we're worried about is the temperature and the height. We're going to measure the height of the capillary tube <clears throat> against the temperature which it's being submerged in. So what are we aiming to see by the end of it? We will hopefully plot a graph of Let's get a nice plot here. The height against the temperature in degrees C and in centimeters. And what we're probably going to find is, let's just plot it here. You're probably going to find that the lines lie along a straight line, <coughs> which is quite good. We will only probably be able to achieve that up to about 
for a very small area because we're probably going to take it down to um, 20 degrees. And we'll probably take it up to about 80 degrees and we'll try and fit as many points on there as possible. <clears throat> However, that line can extend back and though not drawn to scale, it will imply that the intercept is minus 273 degrees C. Ideally, in other words, for every one degree that's increased, there will be a 1 over 273 fraction of the original volume <coughs> increase. That's the idea. So therefore, if you were to reduce the volume, the temperature, if you get to absolute zero, you get to an abs to zero volume. It exerts no volume at all. Now you might say to yourself, well, actually, that, you know, that's a bit of a problem practically because if there's my capillary tube <coughs> inside my capillary tube, um, doesn't it depend on L0, or if you prefer, H0, the original height that I set out? Well, yes and no. If you have a greater height, <coughs> um, then what should happen is we should just get a steeper line with the same intercept. <coughs> how do we... Okay, so now, how do we work out this figure here? Well, <coughs> we probably want to plot something which doesn't have minus 273 degrees there. We probably want to plot something that's much more... Just leave that there. We probably want to plot something which has just the range of values that we're looking for. And whichever heights we're looking for. Let's just take it arbitrarily. You've got 10 centimetres and it goes to 6 centimetres. <coughs> You've got a nice set of results in here. Okay, y equals mx plus c is the general form of the equation, but we've plotted h equals m temperature plus c. Where is the, first of all, the gradient, which equals m, ought to be discovered, which is easy enough. It's going to be the delta h <coughs> divided by the delta t. But the intercept, how are we going to find out the intercept c? Well, we need to find, so to find c, we need two values. So let's take a point and we get T and H. C is going to equal H minus the gradient by T. That's straightforward via substitution. However, of course, we're looking for the magic marker of when T, when H, sorry, when H equals zero, T is going to be minus C over the gradient. That is going to tell us where zero is. So it's a little bit involved there, but I, I think that should make sense. We're, rather than plotting, you know, this long axis set, so rather than plotting <coughs> this huge axis, of which these make very little, um, you, they show very little, what we endeavour to do is 
we will endeavour to plot just what we need and then use the maths to work out where they are. Okay, you probably... Okay, so now's the time to see the video and see the practical actually happen. And <clears throat> here it's coming. So here we go. Right, here is the experimental setup. Looking at Charles's law, it's we are looking at an air cavity that's in a capillary tube. So we can see here what you might be able to see inside the speaker, there's a capillary tube and a thermometer side by side, and that's on the back of a meter ruler. And there's an air cavity here. The bottom of the capillary tube is sealed. The top is open. I won't I won't show you the top, believe me. And there is my air gap with um, concentrated sulfuric acid that's sitting above it. The reason why concentrated sulfuric acid rather than water that creates that is because the, it will um, it will make sure there's no the sulfuric acid will make sure there's no moisture in that air cavity. So essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to f use this as my water bath, fill it with water, and in increase the temperature, which I'll measure on the thermometer and see whether the air cavity increases in volume because the pressure is fixed because the top of the cavity is open. Now so two things one be careful about the sulfuric acid so be fairly wary about that and two what we're going to do is we're going to heat it up with a kettle of water so I'm going to go hot first so boil the kettle filling this up I'm going to go hot first and we can see the air cavity increase in volume and then I'm going to let the system cool down and in cooling down we should hopefully see this air cavity decrease in size. I'm simply going to measure the height. You can probably see the bottom there is not actually at zero. The bottom there is about 0 0.5 nine centimeters and the top there of course we're running at one two three five five point six now so you need to work out the height of just the air column and make sure the water is completely covering the air column because you want the whole of that air column at the same temperature of course, the thermometer is reading a reading up at the top, and with a little, once it's stabilised, which it looks like it has, with a bit of patience, the temperature will come down and the air cavity will start to decrease. If you want, however, you can just add in and fill in some cold water to accelerate that cycle. However, it's probably worth just having it loose enough so you can mix the water, so there's no uh, points of hot and cold. But essentially, it's a straightforward practical. Be wary of the sulfuric acid and make sure you're covering the entire air pocket, which means you might need to try and take out some water to put some cold in or just use a much bigger beaker to, effect, to allow that to happen. Okay, so that's the experiment. I have to say I wasn't very successful with the results. Let me try and find you some to show you how they went. Um, there are the heights. You press pause and have a look at these if you want. I have a series of temperatures, of course, a series of heights, and my averages. I didn't really need to take it twice. It's quite straightforward. There's not a large amount of movement on these. However, when we look at the graph... Maybe I'm doing myself a disservice by describing this as not very good. However, let me just write in here, this should be temperature, degree C. We've obviously got the height of the sulfuric acid. It is a straight line, so we've got something that looks fairly proportional going on here. However, you will probably see that when we try and work out I mean, first of all, this is nice because 
I've got the equation of a straight line. So I don't have to start trying to find out what this will be. Even though in order to find that, I need to do the substitution. And of course, this is the gradient. However, what we do know is that the absolute zero is going to be equal to minus intercept divided by gradient, which is minus 1.952 divided by 0 0.041. And if I just try that out, 0 0.52 divided by divided by 0 0.041, I get minus 48 degrees Celsius, <laughs> which, of course, is nothing close. So, uh, what are the problems there? Like I said before, we tried the three major problems were one, the capillary tube too wide. Um, the second one is too much sulfuric acid. However, if you get a better result, then that would be great. Um, Yes, there we go. What are we looking for? Well, we believe that the 